Oh, hey, a vacation movie. Everybody loves going on a trip. A what trip? Death Trip is brought to us by first time director James Watts and stars Kelly K, Tatia Oleol, Garrett Johnson, and Melina Tramarchi as Kelly, Tatiana, Garrett, and Melina. Yeah, the characters are all named after the actors that betray them. We follow this group of young 20 somethings that are going on a vacation to a cabin in the woods. Always a great idea for a weekend of drinking, smoking, hopefully fucking, and just overall mid 20s debauchery. However, if you couldn't guess from the title of the movie, not everything goes as planned on this trip because it's a death trip and in most cases that would probably be perceived as ominous. Everything seems to be going more or less as planned, however some odd occurrences start to pop up. We got some suspect neighbors, a really uncomfortable party, and a pulse-pounding, hard-ending, ending sequence that comes out of fucking nowhere like a hammer to the goddamn head. Death Trip sells itself as a horror thriller, and it is. However, there is some stuff you gotta get through to get to those horror elements. Right out the gate, what I really liked about this movie was its style. For first-time filmmakers, they did a great job here. This movie oozes style. There's a foreboding feel over everything in this movie. The entire time you were just waiting for something to happen. And in a thriller, that's great. You're building tension, so when you come in with the stab, it really hits home. The only problem is, it takes a really fucking long time to get to that part. There's a huge part of this movie that is just these characters hanging out and partying and talking about shit. And admittedly, I was never bored. The movie did keep my attention the whole time. That tension I was talking about really keeps you focused on what's going on. But looking back, I just felt like a lot of that that was going on, while I guess it could be seen as character building, and it was, it was also just really unneeded. There was a lot of downtime in the first, like, half of this movie, if not a little more. Now what they do to help with that tension and keep you hooked is the movie will periodically, for just a couple of seconds, flash forward to the climax. We will just randomly catch little snippets here or there of the carnage that is forthcoming. And that did keep things interesting, just as you think things are kind of droning on too long, they'll pop an image of a body up on screen or like somebody just covered in blood or some violent scene that just happened. And you're kind of like, what, what the fuck? What's going on? What, what's going to happen? And then it'll go back to the current time and just continue on as it was. Now, it's not just all these characters sitting around a table talking the whole time. Now, granted, there is a lot of that, but it's not all that. There is some other stuff that happens, and that stuff was good. It helped with that tension as well, and it moved the story forward. There's some stuff about the neighbors and what could have possibly gone on there or what is going on there right now, and all of that is kind of creepy. There's also also another part about the neighbors that does pop up later in the movie that does get things exciting again. That's kind of how this movie's structured for a lot of the time. You have these long scenes of people just kind of like hanging out and doing shit and then every now and then it'll pop up with something and give you something to pique your interest. And while it does pique your interest, it never totally gets you there. It keeps you interested enough and gets you to thinking how did that person get that way and where's that person and this person and things like that. But it doesn't change the fact that some of these filler scenes in the middle feel like just that at times. Filler. I'm not saying they should have like cut them totally out, but maybe cut them down a bit. A little snip snip here or there would have helped this movie tremendously. Now while the first half of the movie is quite a slow burn, once you get to a certain point in this movie, things take off and they don't stop until the end credits roll. There's a part that takes place in a pizzeria. From that scene on, things just take off. The vast majority of the second half of the movie is taken up by a party that all our characters go to, which is all around just one of the most uncomfortable situations I've seen on screen in quite a while. This party is like a powder keg of emotions. There's so much stuff going on. You're waiting for something to pop off here. I wanted more than anything in the world for these characters to just get the fuck out of this party the entire time. Shortly after that, the end part of the movie kicks off, and that shit is just batshit insane. It ratchets everything 
everything up to a fucking 11 like within seconds and that was a great time there's an altercation that takes place towards the end of the film that was just awesome that was so great to watch now this is a low budget film but what they did with what they had was great the way they shot the more violent moments of the film while it does show stuff you can tell they couldn't show too much because they just didn't have the budget but the way that it shot makes it seem like they showed a lot more than they did. That's not to say that they don't show things. They do, for sure. But they never overextend themselves. Instead, they got creative with the way that they shot this thing. It never seemed like they were cutting away from anything. This was some really good editing, to the point to where it made the film feel more graphic and gory than it probably actually was. Now, while I really liked the second half of this film and the end part was just great, there are a few things that are left unexplained and not in the, hey, we're gonna leave this for you to try and figure out and think about and theorize about kind of way. No, there's some shit that's just not explained and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense as to why it happened. There's a really odd and creepy scene about halfway through the movie that I really liked. It was a great scene but it doesn't really make any sense. Some things happen in this scene that are never really explained, or at least I didn't pick up on it. It was a very effective, great scene, but when you get to thinking about it, you're like, what the fuck was that? Why did that just happen? And that sentiment extends to the end of the movie. The events that trigger what happens in the end of this film, I guess I kind of get, but not totally. I feel like I'm missing something there. For fear of spoiling things, I don't want to say too much, but it just seems like there's a scene or something or some type of explanation to explain why things went the way they did. And you get that kind of feeling throughout this film in a couple of parts. There are scenes that pop up that you're kind of like, was that real? I, I don't really know. I thought it was, but it doesn't really make sense why it happened, much less what happened in that scene. And none of these are bad scenes. I actually enjoyed most of these scenes I'm talking about and some of the other ones I won't mention. But like I said, when you get to thinking about them, you're kind of like, what's going on here? Am I missing a key component to this movie? I mean, at times it almost seems like there's like alternate worlds or timelines going on. Some of the things that are happening here don't quite make sense. And I'm not even talking about how they flash forward to things. I got that. I understood that whole thing. But there's other stuff that happens that just doesn't quite line up. Now, all that being said, this movie is actually really entertaining. It's got a lot of holes and I have a lot of questions. But it's done so well that I couldn't help but like it. Even though those parts of the movie that just really didn't make a whole lot of sense. I look back on and while yeah, I would like an explanation as to what the fuck that was, I still had a good time with it. I enjoyed it. It's just done so very well. And while the story is quite a slow burn in that first half and there's some glaring holes, overall I did enjoy the story and execution of Death Trip. It's kind of weird because I see things to be critical of. I see things I'm like, that doesn't work. That that right there shouldn't be like that. You need to explain this a little bit more but I'm okay with it because at the end of the day it was entertaining and it wasn't so far out there that you're just like okay broke the fucking movie it almost does in a couple of moments but for the most part it's fine I guess I I really would like some explanation though on some of these things that just really kind of baffle me now in the performance department things aren't too bad our main cast of characters do a good job they all seem like they really know each other in real life personally all these long conversations that we get to see in this movie all feel very natural. These really seem like lifelong friends that are hanging out, just having a good time, shooting the shit. And that did really lend itself to helping us, the viewer, getting connected with these characters. There's no shortage of character building in this movie. It's got it in spades. And while I do think that the movie had a bit too much of it, that's not the performance's fault. The performances here are all very solid. Now, we do get a few side characters later in the movie, and some of them at times come off a little wonky, but I think that may have been intentional. A few of these characters are supposed to come across as kind of out there and creepy, and I think that's what they were going for. And the performances are fine. I mean, they're not quite up to the level of the main characters, but it's okay, because none of them are really on screen for very long at all. Overall, the performances in this movie are really solid, especially especially for first timers. Now from a technical perspective, this movie looks great, especially given how little the filmmakers had to work with. This was absolutely a passion project for these filmmakers and they had very little money, but you really can't tell, the movie looks great. And one of the things that really helped with that is the way it's shot. This movie is shot really nice. It's got some really interesting camera work here and the editing is spot on. They use creative editing to great effect here to cover up the lack of budget at times and it absolutely 
absolutely works. Something else about the technical side of this movie that was really great was the score. It's very minimalist. There is not a whole lot of it. But the very little bit we get does a wonderful job of ratcheting up that tension throughout the film. It's so subtle that you don't even notice it at times, but it is also so effective that I'd be willing to bet you if you took it out of the film, it wouldn't be half as filled with tension as it is. This is a great, simple, unnerving score that never overstays its welcome or overshadows what's going on on screen. Now, as far as special effects go, as far as I could tell, they are all practical and they look great. They are a bit minimalist for the most part, but very effective. We do get a few gore shots, especially in the end of the film. Things at that point get very bloody. And while it's not quite as on display as you could tell the filmmakers would have wanted, as I mentioned earlier, they used very creative editing to get the point across. And never does it feel like it's not gory. Like I said, this movie seems like it's gorier than it actually really is. And while we gore hounds out there would all love to see more gore at all times, the honest truth is, if it's not in the budget and you can't do it effectively, then I'd rather you just not do it. And that's what they did here. They did not overextend themselves. They stayed within their wheelhouse and made that extremely effective. Overall, from a technical standpoint, this movie is great and I can't wait to see what Watts has in store for us next. Guys, Death Trip was a pretty good time. Has it got its faults? Yes, absolutely. It's got holes in the story left and right. Scenes that happen that just don't quite click and it kind of leaves you a bit frustrated at times because they were great scenes. You really enjoyed those scenes, but when you try and fit them into the rest of the movie, you're kind of like, what the fuck is going on here? Though on the flip side of that, these scenes are so entertaining and work so well that even though they don't totally make sense, they are still a really good time. It is a bit of a slow burn at first, but once it starts going, this is a great ride with a fantastically bloody ending. If you can handle a few odd unanswered questions, then Death Trip is absolutely worth checking out on streaming. Across the street. If you're looking for a tension-filled murder fest that starts out a bit slow, then check out Death Trip one night and I think you'll have a good time with it. So there it is guys, my review of Death Trip. If you enjoyed and want more content like this, hit that subscribe button and help my little channel grow. If you liked what I had to say, give me a like. If not, let me know in the comments below why. And as always, stay sexy Montreal. <laughs>